All right. I want us to consider our traveling in this world. We expect nothing from a wilderness than what it is. Dull produces nothing of itself profitable. So we must always be alert, lest we enter into a desert unguarded and be overcome. But God hasn't left us to travel through a completely empty land. One cannot live without being around something else that is alive from which to benefit from. So in this barren land, God has planted life. He has planted trees. Isaiah 41, verse 19. I will plant trees in the wilderness, the cedar, the shittah tree, and the myrtle, and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine, the box tree, together. Now, I looked up these different trees, and the information that I got for them was so terrifically paralleled, I saw that this wasn't just a coincidence, that God had just randomly selected these trees to put it into this text. Each tree represented something different that we have in Christ, in salvation, each one with its different uses. Now the cedar, the cedar tree, it aids our education in providing good wood that we use for pencils. And it's one of these trees, it's one of these trees that is firm enough, the wood is firm enough to build houses with and steady ships. And it is also drought resistant. Now the shitta tree was listed as being known as a biblical tree. It was used in building sacred monuments, such as parts of the tabernacle and the Ark of the Covenant. And the myrtle tree is interesting. A new tree doesn't grow from seeds off branches like a tree usually does. But actually with this tree, it re-sprouts from the trunk, from the root. And eventually it grows up and out of it. And the oil tree is known for having fine wood used for furniture, and, is, and it's obviously natural oil. Now these trees, they were placed in the wilderness. The wilderness, wild, wild and inhospitable, is what we trudge through every day here. But we see these pillars of our salvation. God, he hasn't left us ignorant. He gives us an education, his written word, that we must have to grow in our knowledge of him. Amen. He hasn't left us in the open to be devoured, but protects us with his walls of grace under the roof of mercy. He has given us a covenant, a promise, that those who willingly run by his gracious guidance alone will spend eternity in paradise, for which we are heirs. We are not left to die and to remain so, but to have new life within us and have done away with the former. The decaying stump of what we once were then peels off as our roots extend into the kingdom. And our hardships are met in Christ with his comfort, which is also the oil to our desire to please him. So what marvelous things to behold. There comes times also for all of us when the ground becomes sandier and the sun beats down harder. Troubles and trials are guaranteed for one especially who walks by faith. But let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble. Neither be ye afraid because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. As Deuteronomy 20 verse 3 through 4 says. So God is still with us in our hardships. He's for us in our struggles. He has planted trees in the desert too. Amen. The fir is an evergreen, ever constant, ever durable. It won't change along with the weather, but it remains. It lasts through it all. The pine is fast growing, also an evergreen. The weather doesn't slow it down or hesitate its growth. And the box tree is unique in that its branches have an upward growth. While many plants have leaves and branches that extend outward and droop towards the earth, this tree's branches, they grow pointing upward. So even in the driest places, our God is still faithful to us. The faith he has given us can withstand anything as long as we hold on to it. Amen. While other beliefs fade and prove their intolerance, our faith remains unshaken and unchanged. And it is also mentioned in the scripture that the box and the pine tree was placed together. And as we look into this parable, parallel, once again, we see God's intentions shining through. Now, before a trial, we notice God prepares us for it with an increased appetite for him. And afterwards, we find that we have more, more room to grow, more growth. We grow in great leaps and bounds. But also, we don't grow so quickly in a sideways direction, lacking where we should grow, growing outward and down towards the earth but we grow upward to God. And this growth is genuine, unable to be tented or prevented. Now, how are all these things so? 
How is it possible for there to be life in a wilderness or a desert? It's because God has caused this. This moves us on to our next verse, Isaiah 41, verse 20, that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord hath done this, and the Holy One of Israel hath created it. Amen. No one else can create a place with such rich benefits in a barren land. Neither can one sustain that so that it will serve its purpose to those who partake of it. These trees are the building blocks to our, our foundation of where we stand in Christ. Without these trees, we wander aimlessly to shrivel up and die. We can't survive without partaking of what these trees give. But God has not left us desolate, and, it isn't, as God's, and isn't it as God's delight to found something and put it in an environment that contradicts what its nature is and to let it prosper there? Nothing returns to God void. When we make it through each moment still alive, this bears witness of these trees and of the source of life itself, which is God. So in calling us up higher, consider these trees around us, brethren. They keep us stable, and they bring us closer to the promised land, where we will then partake of another tree, which will provide eternity for us with God. This tree will probably be familiar to us, as in the taste we may have taken a little bit of now of these trees around us because it gives us the same thing life revelation 2 verse 7 he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches he that overcometh will i give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of god and just as the trees that we have around us now we can eat of that tree freely <laughs>